Hey, this is Onesto, and today we're gonna to learn how a beginner can use Neutron 3. In this video, I'm gonna show you what features a beginner should focus on first and then where to go from there. And trust me when I say this, I wish this video were around when I was first starting to use Neutron 3. It would have saved me so much time. Here's how to use Neutron 3 for beginners. All right, first things first, what is Neutron 3? What does it do? When should you use this? Neutron 3 is this mixing plugin suite that's all, the whole purpose, the whole mission is to help you get the best mix possible in kind of the easiest way possible. It's kind of great like that. It was even better is that Isotope had designed Neutron 3 to communicate with one another, to help just keep assisting you to get just great sounding music. Let me just open up Neutron 3 and just show you what it looks like. It's very, very simple. I have Neutron 3 Advanced right here. Make it a little bigger. This little plus sign, you're able to add on different modules all across to, to help you know mix, mix your, your track, with the sound you're going for. But if you just look in here, you have an EQ, you have two compressors, an exciter, which is like saturation, gate, transient, shaper. All these things are really kind of boring, common, basic tools. What makes Neutron 3 just like such a game changer is that it is designed to intelligently assist you while you're mixing from the very beginning, all the way to the very end, and even into mastering. It is helping you. It is not just allowing you to tweak things. It is like assisting you in tweaking things, which is a really... Great thing if you're a beginner. Okay, so when should you start using Neutron 3 in your session? For me, I like to start messing with Neutron 3 once I'm all done writing, once I'm all done arranging and sound designing. Once my song is all written out, that's when I'll start bringing out Neutron 3 to help mix. Okay, so the first thing, if you're a beginner, the first thing you should focus on is Mix Assistant. This tool is gonna be something that you use so many times, maybe always, you're always gonna be referring to this because it does such a good job and shaping uh, your sound and cleaning it up and just getting that clarity, that punch, fullness and presence, all those good things. So I put together this like four bar loop. I just literally grabbed a bunch of samples, put it on here. Um, I have Neutron across everything, but it's on its default. I'm gonna play it for you, here we go. So it's kind of just like that future pop bass kind of thing. Right now I have a limiter. Let me show you this limiter. See how much is clipping? Okay, it's clipping like crazy. That's a really bad thing. But there's something that Neutron 3 can help do that just fixes it. So I'm gonna save this for later, which hopefully will surprise you. So Mix Assistant. We are gonna place it on these chords here. Okay, so this is what you do. Mix assistant, click it, track enhance, click next. Uh, this here, you can t tell them what uh, instrument it is. You can also just do auto detect. I like to just, you know, select what it is. In this case, I'm saying that it's a synth pad. And then you select what kind of style you want. Warm, this uh, will emphasize the bass in your instrument. Uh, balance, just kind of give you a well-rounded shape. And up front, this focuses more on the mid-range frequencies um, for presence. And uh, let's see, and then your intensity, like how intense you want the processing to be. I'm gonna choose up front and low, and we'll see what happens. So right now, Neutron 3 is listening to the sound is to start applying all these different processes on it. Cool. Great, so hit the sept. Uh, and then here you go. This is what it spit out. And it has all these different settings that are all unique to the sound that you put in there. But one thing with Mix Assistant is that um, please don't uh, lean 100% on it. This is going to give you a really good ballpark of what your sound should be like and the process it should have on it. But please still use your ears. So for example, as I'm listening to this, it sounds gross. It doesn't sound like what I wanted it to sound like. like that's how it sounds normally. And what's happening is that the sculptor right here is pushing down all these high frequencies. And this is a good time to talk about sculptor. What sculptor is gonna do is that it's a, it's a spectral shaper, which I'll just demonstrate you right here. This moving line right here is kind of like this EQ. There are like hundreds of EQs all split up across the frequency spectrum. And it's going to be uh, constantly adapting to the sound that's being put in it. Uh, but one thing that I don't like right now is the way that it's affecting the high frequencies. So I can bring this down here. So it's telling it to ignore the high frequencies and just focus on the part that's not um, grayed out. So it sounds a whole lot better. 
versus. Yeah, it sounds like muffled and stuff. I don't want that. Great. So then let's look at what else Mix Assistant did for us. So we have the sculptor going on. We have this e equalizer. And what's happening is that it rolled off some of the low end here, boosted the high end. Whenever there's like a, a dip happening right here, it usually means that there was uh, like some resonance buildup, like a really gross sounding frequency that um, just kind of like hurts your ears. <laughs> so what this is doing is that it's like cutting it out for us um, dynamically, which is pretty cool. We have two compressors. I like to look at how much the compressor is working. It's just like all less in it if it's too crazy. Great, and then we have our exciter. So here's before and after. After. Cool. So right now it's sounding a little too uh, much. A little too much going on. So I'm going to bring this down. Cool, so I, I'm liking the way that sounds a lot better. All right, so if you're a beginner, the next thing that you should really focus on and explore are the, all the presets in Neutron 3. There are a lot of presets, like tons of presets in this uh, plugin. Here, I'll show you. So if you click default, this brings up all your plugins here. It has them based off of like types of instruments. So bass, you have acoustic, electric, and synth. You can click this down, there's even more drop down. Like there's just all kinds you can like look at. They have just so many settings. And then if you click in each module, if you click this, there's even presets inside each module. So it's just tons of presets you can explore. Um, and the only reason why I bring that up is because as a beginner, um, I learned so much from presets because these presets weren't just like randomly just put together. They were um, created by mixing engineers, sound designers, people that are way more experienced and better than you and I. And uh, they put together these settings that they believe would just be good go-to presets. Let's look at these drums here. Here we go. Cool. So this is a drum bus. I'm calling it a drum bus because it has multiple um, pieces of a drum kit, like kick and the snare in there. So uh, I'm going to just go to drum bus electronic. And then we're going to just go through these and find one that we think sounds pretty good. That's pretty cool. Okay. I like this one here. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. So once I find something I'm like really interested in, I want to learn more about, I go through each of these settings here and, and just see like, how is it getting the sound that I really like? So I like that like tail whenever like the, the snare hits. So I want to figure out like how, how the Neutron do that. So what I like to do is just kind of turn off each module and see um, what it is that's making that sound. So it's not the EQ, it's not the transit shaper. Yeah, it's the exciter. So this exciter is kind of like a saturator. It's bringing a more harmonic richness to your sound. And this is a multi-band saturator or exciter, which means that you can split up each part of the um, frequency spectrum and just apply certain amounts of saturation across. So in the bass, we have nothing going on. But right here, we have something. It's not creating that sound that I like. It must be this. Yeah, see? So what I'm able to do is just realize, okay, so if I apply like some saturation, some excitement to the high end of like a drum snare, it's gonna give me that like really um, longer, like bigger sounding tail. So if you're a beginner, after you're familiar with Mix Assistant, after you explore some presets and are just having fun with that, um, the next thing you should really focus on is masking assistant. The masking detection in Neutron 3 is really helpful for preventing masking. And what masking is, is when there are two instruments or sounds that, where there's like a frequency 
um, that are overlapping because they're overlapping because they have like similar tones or timbres, um, they can mask one another. And what Neutron does in, in the, with their equalizer is that it allows you to see if there is any masking going on. And it's really visual and really helpful to use. Let me show you um, how to do that. So in our loop, we're going to focus on these guitars and uh, those synth chords that we worked on. So here is how it sounds. So my guitar, that's like, I want that to be like the lead. I want that to be the focal point. I want the chords to be just a little uh, step back. But right now I want to see if any frequencies are colliding and we're going to use Neutron to help us determine if that's happening. So Neutron on the left is going to be my guitar. The Neutron on the right are the chords. So my guitar one here, guitar layer, I'm going to select chords. So now it's going to be um, listening and it's going to tell me if there are any masking going on. So we can use increase in sensitivity or lower it, but we don't really need to mess with any of that because we can already tell that this is detecting masking right here and right here. So this is how you can fix it. So first of all, make sure down here on the EQ that you're selected on the right one. So this is my chords, this is my guitar. So I want to be on my guitar. I see that the masking is happening right here. And one thing you can do is inverse link. And what this means is that as I bring up um, up or down this node, it's going to do the exact opposite on the other instrument. So this is my guitar. I want my guitar to be um, boosted here. So I'm going to bring this up and you can see how this dot went down, how a node here went down. So there you go. And as you're playing it again, um, you'll see these decrease, hopefully. See how it's not as much? I want there to be more, so I'm going to bring this down a bit more on the chords. A little more. Great. So then I also want to do the same thing to uh, this area here. I'm not going to do the inverse. I'm just going to go directly to my chords here and then drop it. A tiny bit. All right, so let's uh, bypass the EQs and see if we can hear any big differences. We may or may not. All right, this is way too much. So not enough. Okay, so it's a very, really, really, really subtle uh, example. There's some moments where masking, like there is a big difference, some were subtle and some where it just doesn't feel like there's any difference at all. You just can't really hear it. And that's another thing. Once again, use your ears. Just because this tool exists inside Neutron doesn't mean you should always use it or always trust it. This is gonna show you like technically where there is masking, but if you can't really hear it, um, I think you just, you know, Ignore it and just be like, just be okay with it. But if you actually do hear a difference, then of course use it. All right, the next thing to focus on as a beginner is gonna be the visual mixer. And this is another pretty incredible tool for gain staging. Uh, and gain staging is like probably one of the biggest things you do in mixing. It's uh, what gain staging is, it's just a phrase that means like making sure the volume of things makes sense. So if your bass is way too loud, you just bring it down. That's gain staging. It's making sure um, every track, every sound is, um, balance in volume. In Neutron 3 or Isotope, they have a tool that helps you out with that, which is amazing. It's called Visual Mixer. Let me bring it up here. And once again, this is going to assist you automatically. Just, just click a button and it's gonna gain stage everything out for you. So the way this works, if you wanna gain stage, if you wanna use Visual Mixer, is that you need to have an instance of Neutron on all of your uh, sounds here. So I already have Neutron 3 on my bass, on my chords, on my guitar and on my drums. It's all across. And then what's just there, you have them all listed here. Boom, and then I'm gonna click Mix Assistant. And let me bring this up real quick because remember how loud this is showing up? Yeah, so you don't, that's like, it's peaking, the limiter is like, the volume is not even boosting anything. Let me show you what this does, it's pretty great. So what you gotta do is, 
after you click, let me show that again. Click Mix Assistant. This is just telling you how to set it up. Click Begin. And then click all these boxes on the things that you want Neutron to focus on or Visual Mixer to focus on. And then you click one of these stars saying like, this is the one instrument or the vocal that I want to be pushed up in the mix. Everything else can be further back. So I'm going to click the focus on my guitar because I want that to be my lead. And then it'll say this player song from the beginning. Great. Go to results. Cool. So now I set these levels, but before we listen to that, I like to click edit classification and make sure that everything is, uh, the track type is correct. Cause sometimes it isn't like one time some of my drums were marked as like the musical category, which is not, it's percussion. Just make sure it's all correct. It looks like it is here. And then uh, we'll listen to it now. See how much quieter it is to like fix it. Remember how loud it was before? Let me keep that looped. Okay, so brought all the levels down, which I thought was pretty amazing. Um, I just knew to, um, that things were just way too loud in a hole. So now I can bring this up here on my limiter. Great. Anyways, okay, so this is what the assistant off with it on. Off. So you can tell that there is um, something happening here. And the way you can even get a better visual idea of it is you look at the visual mixer itself. And one thing that's great is that like, let's say you still want to adjust it. You can just bring the bass down with the bass. What it did here, if you click and drag this, it can make something sound mono when it's just like a little circle. When it becomes an oval, um, it means that it's become a wider sound. I'll just bring this back to around here. way too wide but it's cool I can do that so great does that just doing that alone has already given me a good starting point of how to mix it the more that I, I try this thing out I'm like okay yeah it does get you to like maybe like 65 percent of the way of like the volume that I really like um I just want to push it the rest of that 35 percent and the way you do that is two things one you got to use your ears of course but secondly please use a reference track so if there's a reference track where you really you just love that track and you want your song to sound similar to it or to be inspired by it, use that track to, to, to make sure like, okay, cool. Like this is where the, the chords, like the level, I should feel a little bit quieter than the lead, but much louder than the drums or whatever. Like you're using that to reference off of. Once like a visual mixer, I feel like gets you like 60, 65% of the way there. And then you just got to use your ears and your, and base it off your reference to, to get it exactly to how you want it. Whoa, that was a lot of fun to talk about. Although Neutron 3 is great at making your song sound a lot better, it's not really designed for creative moments. If you want to learn about some plugins that are more focused on creative sound design, then click or tap one of the videos here. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Hope I can see you again later.